Compression is a tool that helps you control the dynamics of a sound. And by the dynamics of a sound, I mean how the amplitude of a sound changes over time. So for example, if I record a sine wave with an amplitude envelope that looks like this, this is the waveform that I get. And you can clearly see that the amplitude changes over time. So compression is a tool that you can put in your effects chain that gives you some control over how that amplitude changes over time. And there's a lot of different compressors, but for this video I'm focusing on Ableton's compressor, which I think is a nice compressor to start with, mainly because it gives you a lot of visual information to help you understand what's going on. Okay, so the type of compression that Ableton's compressor does is called downward compression. And often when you hear someone use the word compression, what they're referring to is downward compression. And what downward compression means is that whenever the signal that comes into the compressor rises above a certain amplitude threshold, the compressor reduces the gain of that signal, which means the amplitude is pushed back down. So in Ableton's compressor, you can control the level of the threshold where compression starts. So let me bring the threshold down to a point where it's low enough for the signal to pass it. And you can see by looking at this yellow line at the top, that when the signal passes the threshold, compression kicks in. So this gray shape represents the input signal and this yellow line represents the amount of compression that's being applied. So the farther the yellow line goes down, the more compression is being applied. And if I go to the output graph right now, you can see by this white outline that the farther I bring down the threshold, the more the signal gets pushed down. So the white outline here represents the output of the compressor. And I'm going to record what we have now into a new audio track. So what we just did is the main purpose of compression, which is to reduce the dynamic range of a sound. Or in other words, to reduce the amplitude difference between different parts of a sound, like the start and the tail. And in this case, the start used to be a lot louder than the tail, and now it's not. So we used compression to reduce the dynamic range of the sound. So what we've been doing so far is extreme compression where the compression ratio is set to infinite. Which means that in the output the signal will never be louder than the threshold that we just set. But we can bring the ratio down and you can see that now the compression becomes more subtle and no longer pushes the signal completely down to the threshold. So these are the first two controls that we have, the threshold and the ratio. And so you can see that both of these controls determine how hard your sound will be compressed. But it's also important to understand the main difference between threshold and ratio, which is that the threshold determines at what point in time compression starts and ends. Because you can see that the farther I bring down the threshold, the later compression ends. But ratio only controls how hard the compression is and doesn't affect the timing of the compression. Another thing that's important to understand is that the farther the input signal is over the threshold, the higher the amount of compression is. And you can see that if you look at the yellow line, because the compression is way harder at the start of the sound than when the signal is close to dropping below the threshold. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the controls that affect how compression applies over time. And these are a little more difficult to understand. So first we have attack. And what attack does in Ableton's compressor is it affects how quickly compression ramps up as soon as the signal rises above the threshold. And the higher the attack, the longer it will take before we reach the highest amount of compression. So earlier when attack was 0 milliseconds, compression applied right away when the signal passed the threshold. But now with a higher attack, when the signal first passes the threshold, there is no compression yet but it starts to ramp up pretty quickly and after a little bit of time we reach the highest amount of compression before compression decreases again. So the main purpose of attack is that it can let you compress a sound without compressing the very first part too much and the first part often contains the more punchy part of the sound so using attack you can preserve the initial punch of a sound but compress what comes after that. So in other words, using a tech, you can actually add dynamics to a sound rather than reduce the dynamics. Because now we've made the sound more punchy than it was before the compressor, as you can see by the white outline. The initial decay of the sound is now a bit faster than it used to be. So then there's release, and release affects how quickly the compression effect ramps down again after the input signal falls back down. The higher the release, the longer it will take for the amount of compression to fully decrease after the input signal drops down. And you can see when I bring the release up, the output is no longer pushed up against the threshold, but instead we keep a high amount of compression even after the signal falls down. 
and we end up with almost the same dynamic shape that we had before the compressor, because now we keep almost the same amount of compression during the entire sound, which you can see if I switch back to the gain reduction view, the yellow line barely comes up anymore after the input signal falls down, which means we keep high compression all the time. So the main purpose of release is to allow you to control how quickly the amount of compression decreases. One thing that's important to remember about attack and release is that most of the time you want to have at least some of either of them, because otherwise the compressor will cause distortion, as you can hear if I put both of them to 0 milliseconds. And for this video I'm not gonna go into why that happens, because it's kind of a long story, but just keep that in mind. Finally I'm gonna go to this control here, which is the look ahead, and what this does is, after the compressor has read the input signal to determine when it needs to compress, it then delays the sound by 10 milliseconds before it applies that compression. So another way to look at this is, the compression, which is represented by the yellow line, applies 10 seconds earlier than it normally would if there were no look ahead. And the main reason that this look ahead exists is that sometimes you want your compressor to respond to the signal before you can hear it, mainly because it can prevent unwanted clicks caused by the compressor at the start of a sound, or caused by the compressor not being quite fast enough to catch the earliest transients of a sound. So in this case if I turn look ahead off, you'll be able to hear a click, which in this case is being caused by the compressor itself. So a small delay of just a couple of milliseconds is needed to get rid of this click. And you cannot see the difference right now because it's only 10 milliseconds, but you can definitely hear it. Alright, so those are the most basic controls in compression that I think are the most important ones. There's a lot more that can be said about compression, but I think if you understood everything so far, that should probably help you understand compression enough to be able to use it in your projects. So I'm gonna leave it there for now, and I will probably be back soon with another video on some more compression stuff. Okay, see you later.